Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I'm here with the Full Fat Recumbent Electric Trike. It is custom made in England by Inspired Cycle Engineering, or ICE. It does use the uh, Shimano Steps motor. In this case, I've got the Shimano Steps E8000 mid-drive. You could also put the E6100 on there. And in this video, I'm going to dispel some of the myths or misconceptions about recumbent trikes, show you why you might love riding a recumbent trike as much as I do, and go through all of the details of the full fat, explain the configuration options, and take you on a ride test. Now, this video is going to be very long, so feel free to skip around. You can skip to the ride test, and of course, if you have questions, uh, you'll find our contact info on our website at citruscycles.ca. There you'll find a little bit of a configurator to get an idea of the price, but it's best to call or email us and we can walk you through all the options, because there are a lot of options. If you have questions, or you want to schedule an appointment to come try it here on uh, beautiful Vancouver Island in Ladysmith, you can find our contact info on our website as well, and all of that is at citruscycles.ca. Now, I should explain that uh, no one's paying me to make this video. This isn't uh, sponsored by uh, ICE or anything like that. Obviously, uh, I make a living by selling uh, pedal assist electric bikes and uh, electric trikes, and you can find the details of that on our website. Um, and so basically, you know, I want you to have the perfect uh, e-bike or e trike for your needs. That's why I make the videos. I'm not getting paid, so I will tell you uh, my genuine opinion. And on the ride test, you'll hear me uh, say off-the-cuff remarks based on my experience with it. So all of the details, like I said, are on our website at citruscycles.ca. So I've put a number of kilometers on the uh, full fat here along with the Adventure and I do have a video review of the Adventure recumbent electric trike from ICE as well on our website and I often get to ask the questions, what's the deal with a recumbent trike? Why do I always have such a big smile on my face when I'm riding it? So sometimes people are confused because they assume that I'm disabled. And that's because there are a lot of misconceptions and myths about recumbent trikes. So until I started riding them myself, I had no idea how comfortable they could be. Obviously, it is a bit different than riding a bike. Uh, and I often give a quick summary of the advantages by saying it's incredibly comfortable, very stable, and I feel safer on the road. And interestingly, it can be both relaxing and thrilling, depending on how you choose to ride it. So the relaxing part is both expected and unexpected. It's pretty clear when you see it, you've got this really, really relaxing chair, and it's even better when you sit in it and you realize, wow, that is super comfortable. So of course, that is going to make it very relaxing. Uh, you can adjust the seat angle. We've actually got a quick release on the other side here that allows you to adjust to uh, three different positions, uh, four different positions on the quick release here. You can see, there we go. Uh, but also we've got a bolt here with another four positions. So if I wanted this more upright, I would uh, either adjust it up here, which I can, and then if I want it even more upright than the quick release allows for, I can take the uh, bolt out here and reposition it into one of those three other positions, again giving you a tremendous amount of customization uh, over the angle that you can have. Now the interesting thing is the seat height here, from the ground to the seat, is around the same as my couch. So sometimes people think, oh, it must be really hard to get in and out of. Not any more so than a chair, and if you need to, we can put uh, helping handles on here that actually help you get in and out. But being able to adjust the angle, of course, makes it really easy, and of course you've got it uh, reclined. I've got it reclined for a bit right now, but you can choose to uh, have that however you wish. That definitely makes the ride more relaxing. But you especially notice the benefits of a comfortable seat on a longer ride because you're not going to get the fatigue and soreness in your upper body such as your neck, your shoulders, your elbows and your wrists. And of course it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyways, that your bottom is going to be much happier on longer rides as well. So all those are pretty obvious, but it wasn't until I started riding that I realized there's some surprising benefits as well that I wasn't expecting. For example, it seems like a little thing, but you don't have to jump on and off every time you stop, right? On a bike, if you think about it, you have to stop and put your feet down and get off the saddle and get back on whenever you uh, start and stop. But on the trike, you can stay seated. You're not going to fall over. So you stay in the same comfortable chair whether you're moving or stopping. So you can stop, relax, look around, and uh, enjoy the view. 
generally speaking, I try to stop, avoid stopping on my bike. And it wasn't until I started riding the trike that I realized it's like, yeah, instinctively, when I'm riding along on my bike, I get to see a stop sign or see a stoplight coming up or something. I'll kind of slow down and try to time it so that I don't have to stop and get off uh, because, you know, it's rather inconvenient. And uh, so on the trike, I had to kind of train myself that it's okay to stop. I can stop whenever you want. So if I'm coming by the beach here, I can go ahead and stop and look around. It's beautiful and enjoy it for a while because it's uh, not inconvenient getting on and off. For some people, like my wife, uh, she has uh, uh, sore feet sometimes. Her uh, Achilles actually can cause problems. And so getting off in the bike on and off her bike can actually hurt her feet quite a bit this way. She doesn't have to worry about that. So for me, when I'm sightseeing or I'm touring, I just love riding the recumbent because it makes it more enjoyable when I've got this comfortable chair <laughs> wherever I happen to go. Now, obviously with three wheels, a trike gives you the stability that you don't get from a bike. The interesting thing is you don't have to expend energy on maintaining your balance, and that's what often attracts people to a trike. So if you have concerns about balance or mobility, then a trike is going to build your confidence, give you back your mobility, and I've seen it having an incredible impact on our customers' lives. So it's, it's really fun. That's one of the things that I love about uh, my job that I'm so passionate about is getting people moving again, getting them out, uh, getting their freedom and mobility back. What I wasn't expecting is that for people like myself that don't have a balance or mobility issue, when you don't have to balance, you can go as slow as you wish. It sounds silly, but on a bike, if you think about it, if you go too slow, if you don't maintain a minimum speed, you're going to fall off. So with the trike, you can actually crawl right up the hills as slowly as you want. You can roll right up to the barriers on the trail. I'll show you that in the uh, ride test video. Just go as slowly as you want, roll right past them. And of course, you can go on more challenging trails or terrain because there's less risk of falling off, ringing yourself. And that's something that my wife especially has enjoyed coming on challenging trails that she probably wouldn't have gone on on her bike. But on the trike, she's willing to come along because she knows it's unlikely that she's going to fall off and injure herself. So all of these things make sense when you think about it. But here is something else. And this was completely unexpected for me. You don't need to spend your resources, your mental resources, trying to keep your balance. You don't have to focus ahead. You can actually go ahead and look around while you're riding. You'll see I do that on the ride test quite a Quite a bit. You're not going to tense up when you get to a corner or worry when you get onto gravel. So a lot of accidents are actually caused not necessarily because of a lack of balance. Certainly that can cause a problem, but I've fallen off my bike. Not because of a lack of balance, because of poor trail conditions or my own inattention to what was happening, wildlife running out in front of me, or any number of other unexpected occurrences that your mind is always waiting for. It's always looking for those things. It's always on the lookout. And when you have the trike, you don't have to worry about those things. You start to learn after a few rides that you don't have to worry about it because you aren't going to fall off. So what's it like riding a recumbent trike? Well, come try one if you can. It's your choice. It can be thrilling or it can be relaxing. So it does feel faster because you're lower to the ground. The steering, they use indirect steering on here. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but here is where you steer. Very intuitive, very easy to use. It's very positive. So I tend to like to, you know, go fast and, you know, really get a thrill riding it. But sometimes on a longer ride, I also just like to relax, especially in the evening. So for many of our customers, they are focused on relaxing and really enjoying it, especially with this uh, full fat. Okay, so I mentioned that recumbent trikes are comfortable and stable, and I've kind of tried to argue that for you, explain why I feel that way, but I also feel safer on the road and this was a surprise and is likely a myth because I feel safer on the full fat recumbent trike here than on my bike. Look at the size of those tires, right? 4.8 inch wide massive tires. So what happens is cars don't pass me as closely because they see me coming. It's pretty obvious. I've got a flag on there. It has a very large visual footprint. So people see you coming, they're going to give you a wide berth. And uh, they also, if 
for some reason, and I haven't had it happen yet, but if somebody passed me really closely, that kind of burst of wind that you get that makes you feel like you're going to fall off your bike, well, you're not going to fall off your trike. And for my wife, it's like, you know, this is a 26 by 4.8 inch tire. So you see the tires are up, you know, higher than she's sitting. So she feels kind of enclosed and protected by these really wide tires in here. And it makes her feel safe as well. And sometimes that helps as well to keep you safe because you're more confident and you're not uh, anxious and nervous. So certainly I find that uh, cars are definitely giving me the wider berth that I need. Interestingly, if you actually measure, uh, you know, the, the uh, width of the trike here and then uh, set that up, uh, you know, uh, draw a couple lines like that on your bike and go up a hill and try to stay within that, um, you aren't going to want any uh, narrower width than that for what is safe for you to ride because you don't go ex uh, you know, always perfectly straight on your bike. You're going to weave a little bit, especially on a hill. You've got wide uh, bars, especially if you have a mountain bike. So uh, when I show people, you know, you line it up and you put a mountain bike there with the wide bars and the trike, the trike isn't actually taking up that much more room. In fact, I generally fit on the shoulder and uh, beside the white line if I choose to do that. Okay, so I've spent a bit of time talking about what I mean about a recumbent trike being comfortable, stable, and safe. So now I just want to take a moment before I get into the details of the uh, full fat here to talk about why I like ice trikes so much and then get into the details. So the quality is very high as they are custom made in England and so is the uh, engineering. It's very impressive. And the cool thing is you can choose exactly what you want because they are custom made. You can choose the options that you wish. I really like the fact that they are using the Shimano mid-drive motor here. Uh, mid-drive is a lot of benefits compared to a hub motor, uh, so I prefer the mid-drive because uh, the motor is helping you turn the chain. So it feels very natural, it feels like it's just helping you out instead of being pushed along, which is sometimes what happens if they put a motor uh, in the rear tire here. And we, try to avoid that because not only does it give you that pushing sensation, but the other thing is if you have a motor in the rear tire, when you change gears, it has no impact on the motor. But in this case, I have 14 gears in this uh, roll-off speed hub here. Of course, you could put a regular drivetrain on here with a regular cassette. And because that motor up front is turning the chain, when you change to an easier gear, either with a roll-off or with a regular drivetrain, now the motor is automatically also in an easier gear. So you have that uh, mechanical advantage of having a transmission married to your motor. The Shimano E8000 here has an incredible amount of torque, 70 newton meters of torque, and in that, in terms of real world torque, is much higher than a lot and most hub motors. A lot of hub motors will rate their torque that high, but in reality, in the actual usable torque when you're climbing a hill, you'll notice that a mid-drive, like the Shimano Steps here, definitely has a lot more torque than a hub motor. And torque is what we need for getting up a hill. Now, if you don't have massive hills like we do here uh, on Vancouver Island, you could go with the E6100 motor. That's gonna save you a little bit of money, and it is going to give you lower torque, about 60 Newton meters of torque in seven, instead of 70. But I really do uh, recommend, if you have hills, go with the extra torque. So we have a 504 watt hour Shimano battery on the back here. It's mounted on the uh, side here. And uh, the great thing about this is it is actually a Shimano battery. It's not proprietary to ICE. That means any bike shop uh, in the world, uh, basically, that deals with Shimano, which is pretty much every bike shop, can get you a spare battery if you need one. And we know that uh, well into the future, Shimano will have these uh, replacement batteries. You can charge the battery uh, on the trike here if you wish. There's a charging flap right here that we open up. It is attached by a leash leash so you're not going to lose that uh, cover which is really great just clicks back into there um, or you can use the key and uh, remove it from the uh, trike and charge it inside the choice is yours if you wish they actually uh, ice makes a mounting plate for the uh, other side i don't have it mounted but basically you could mount the uh, second uh, battery plate there and uh, bring a spare along with you when your first one uh, runs out then you would simply swap them and put the second one in 
We also have a removable Shimano display here, so that is uh, removable. If you want to bring it in with you, you can certainly do that. The display actually is Bluetooth enabled, so you can pair it with your smartphone, which is quite clever. Uh, there's a couple things you could do with that. You can uh, update the system with the uh, smartphone app. You can actually use your phone as a display to display more data than you might be able to see on the screen all at once, and you can customize those displays, which is really cool. But probably the most popular thing to do is to be able to go into the different levels, so right now the assistance is off. If I press the uh, arrow here, you can see it moves up to Eco. I can actually use the app to say, well, Eco should be really, really, really low or mm, kind of medium low or a little bit higher than too low. And I can adjust each of the three levels. So I can also go to the trail setting, which is a bit of a dynamic mode, kind of adapts a little bit to what you're doing. Again, there with the app, you could say, well, I want trail to be pretty close to eco or no way more close to the high level, which is boost and boost. You can also adjust as well. So uh, to adjust the level back down, you just press the uh, arrow here and you go back down. So fairly easy, straightforward display. Um, there isn't a USB charging port on uh, the display or anywhere on the bike. That's a limitation with the Shimano system. That would be kind of cool to have. Um, that's where maybe Bosch uh, would be nice in terms of having their display, but uh, certainly the Shimano system is really nice to have. Um, in fact, you know, pretty much, um, I, and I've talked to ICE about this, uh, the only reason why I'd really like to have the Bosch system, and personally I really like the Bosch system, although I have nothing against Shimano, and I'll talk a little bit later, we've got the roll-off here. We have to use mechanical shifting with the roll-off because the Shimano system at this point doesn't support electronic shifting, but that may be coming out in the future, so that would be pretty cool. So we don't have USB charging, we don't have a color display like the Bosch Kiox display, uh, which is also uh, pretty cool, but we do have a lot of information that is available on here, and like I said, you can pair it with your smartphone and uh, use that if you want. Uh, it won't upload uh, trip data after a ride like the Kiox display, you can't uh, link it to Strava. But there are some third parties now that are making um, apps and uh, bike computers that'll actually work with the Shimano system and replace this display, so that's pretty cool as well. So with the display here, and I'm, again, I'm, I'm just always gonna be, you know, tell you the things I like and the things that I don't like. It's not a big deal, it is a nice display. You've got the time, you can see that my lights are on. You can see the battery uh, indicator there showing the battery charge, current speed, Current level of assistance. Now, right now, because we don't have a trike with e-shift, this one has the roll-off, it just says manual. If you check out my video of the Adventure, that one I had with the DI2 electronic shifting, it actually shows which gear you're in, which is pretty cool. And if you go with the Adventure and the E6100 and the Shimano internally geared hub, you can actually even enter automatic mode shifting, which is pretty cool. Down here, you can cycle through the information that you see on the screen, either by pressing the button on the display, which is unlikely when you're riding, because you've got another button right here which is much easier to access and each time you press that the information will change. So right now we're looking at the cadence. That's actually really helpful. Uh, that's something I like to keep my eye on because when I first started riding the recumbent I found that I was trying to ride it like a bike and uh, you know it's a little bit of a different muscle group and what I found is that on my bike I tend to pedal really slowly and it was a little, be a little bit more effective to spin a little bit quicker on the trike. So I kind of keep my eye on that and try to get my cadence up a little bit higher than where I had it. So that's uh, nice to be able to monitor that if you care about that sort of thing. You can see the distance that we've gone on this ride so far. Oh let me go back to that distance. Sorry about that. Ah, <laughs> try that again. There we go. The cool thing is if I want to reset Set it. I don't have to go into the menuing system, uh, which, by the way, you can access by pressing the plus and minus together. It gets into the menu system. First thing uh, that I do in the menu, by the way, is I turn off the beeping. That's an option. You can actually have it beep every time you press the button. I really don't like that, so I turn that off myself. Anyways, the distance. Instead of going into the menu there that I just showed you to reset it, you just press and hold the uh, black button, and you can see it starts flashing. Uh, and if you press it again, then it's actually going to reset your trip distance. So that's pretty cool. Um, total odometers, you can see I've done 735 kilometers on the uh, full fat here so far. Your current range and the current level of assistance. So if I go down to Eco, you can see my range is 62 kilometers. In uh, Trail, it's 46. And in Boost, it's 31. Now, instead of going up and down like that, if I just go to the next screen, you can see it actually shows me the level of, uh, or the range for each level of assistance. So that's uh, pretty handy to be able to have that as well. 
All right, and there's our trip time. So how long I've uh, been riding the uh, trike on this trip, my average speed on the uh, trip so far, my maximum speed, and back to the cadence. We also have a button here to control your lights. And uh, I think that's pretty much everything in the menu option. Like I said, you can uh, change the uh, beep, you can change the backlight, the brightness, the colors, the language, the font color, lots of information in there that you can uh, adjust. While I'm over here, I should mention that with uh, ICE, when you're building the trike, you can customize it. So if you wanted the display and the buttons over here, you can do that when you're setting it up. Or if you want the shifting on the left or instead of the right, or you know, however you want things set up, everything on the right side or everything on the left side, those are options that uh, you can do. While we're up here, I'll also show you how to brake. So a lot of times people ask, ah, how do you steer? Well, here is your steering. <laughs> uh, you've got your right and left here. And uh, interestingly, uh, you can very easily steer with just one hand. Uh, I don't recommend at higher speeds not having any hands or any weight on the handlebars because at higher speeds, everything can start shaking a little bit if you completely take your hands off. As long as you have a little bit of weight either on the wrist rest here or on the uh, handlebars themselves, then you're not going to have any problems. This using the indirect steering here is actually really, really easy to steer. Um, unlike a lot of uh, recumbent trikes that use a direct steering, at higher speeds, when you're hanging on here, it's very smooth, very responsive. You don't end up with a lot of shaking and uh, that sort of thing from the uh, road. So as long as you keep your hands on, you're fine. Here is the brake lever for the right brake, for right front brake, and uh, the brake lever for the uh, left front brake. Uh, ICE is very clever. They managed to design the trike somehow, and I'm not sure what the magic is, but somehow they actually have designed it so that it has no brake steer. So I can be going down a hill, and I can be signaling with my left hand, and pulling on the brake lever with my right hand, and only using that one lever, and it won't impact on the steering. So that's uh, pretty clever, because there are a lot of hills here where I'm having to brake and corner at the same time. Uh, so yeah, I talked a little bit about the uh, indirect steering, which is uh, really very positive, very responsive, very, very easy to use. Um, really the only main disappointment I have with the uh, trike, and I'll talk about the transmissions later, is that ICE doesn't uh, give the opportunity of using uh, the NVOLO continuously variable transmission. Uh, but maybe that's something that'll come in the future. Certainly the options that they do give you are very good. Okay, so I've talked about a few of the things that make ICE unique that I'm really uh, excited to be uh, working with them. Uh, and so let me talk now about this specific model, the full fat. Why on earth would you want uh, bike, a trike like this? Because ICE makes a number of trikes and you can find a couple of them on our website and more on their website. Well, right away, one of the things you notice is you do have very high uh, seat positions. So like I said, it's about the same height as my couch, perhaps a little bit higher. Makes it really easy to get on and off that could negatively impact the handling because if you make a recumbent trike with a seat too high you're going to get it you know it's going to be wobbly it's going to not be very stable but what they've done is they've put a very wide stance so this is much wider than the uh, other trikes and that makes it very very stable so it's not tippy at all now with these wide tires i chose to go with the uh, 4.8 inch wide tires you could go with the 4.0 inch the the trike becomes very very off-road capable especially with suspension. So I've got suspension on the front here and on the rear, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Basically, you can go anywhere you want. You'll see that in the video review. I'm going to take you over all sorts of crazy places. Now, the nice thing is if you want to head down to the beach and ride on sand, you can do that. On snow, no problem. Dry, loose gravel, loads of traction from those wide tires. Wet, soft mud, also tons of traction. So pretty much everything in between. And so even if you don't go off-road and you're mostly just riding on the pavement, like my wife is mostly on the pavement, uh, or hard packed gravel, she just loves it because it is so incredibly stable and gives lots and lots of traction. So now if you head over to our website or to the ICE website and you start configuring this, you'll see there's lots and lots of options. So let me just kind of take you through some of the options here because it can be very confusing. If you prefer to skip over the, to the ride test, you can certainly do that. Of course, you can also call or email and I'm more than happy to uh, help explain the options, but why don't I kind of take you through them? So first of all, the full fat does come with rear suspension and that's ideal. You really want that. You can see there's a couple of elastomers in there. We can change the hardness of those elastomers based on your weight requirements. We can change the position of them to adjust them. But basically what this is doing is 
is it's isolating you from the bumps. It's very effective at that. It gives you a very comfortable ride. And of course, with the assistance, you are going to be going on longer rides. So it is nice to be kind of isolated from the bumps. Uh, on the front, you can choose whether you have a rigid uh, front end or suspension. So you can see I've got the uh, suspension on here. This is a four bar leading link suspension. It does offer anti-dive and no bump steer. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the bumps aren't going to impact on your steering and when you brake, the, bu the, the trike isn't gonna dive forward like sometimes it does on cheaper suspensions. So you could go with a uh, rigid, uh, not have the uh, suspension. Um, the two reasons to do that would be to save a little bit of money and to save weight. Now, it's kind of silly to be truthful to save the weight because look, we've added a motor, we've added a battery, we've added really large tires, there's a, you know, a fair bit of weight here and the little bit of weight that that suspension is adding, you're not going to notice it. So really you'd only get it if you're really trying to save money. Otherwise, it's really nice to have both the front and the rear suspension, not only for comfort, but the wheels track and handle a lot better. It gives you more traction in rougher terrain by making sure that all three wheels are always on the ground no matter how bumpy it gets. Another option you'll see when you're configuring your trike is the uh, seating. What I have on here is the uh, Ergo Flow. This is very breathable because you've got the mesh here, very comfortable. We've got straps at the back that allow you to adjust the uh, tension on the back, which is really cool. And I've also mentioned the uh, adjustable angle on it. We've got a little bit of padding on the side here to kind of uh, help keep you in. And that's kind of the, the default with the um, uh, the full fat here. We have a zipper compartment at the back, which is really cool. So there's some storage back here. As long as you don't put anything really sharp and pointy in, you're not actually not going to notice it. There's a couple of compartments in there. So I put some tools. Um, I used to put a tube in there as well. Now I'm putting that in the uh, side bags here, which I'll talk about in a moment. So it's uh, nice to have that uh, kind of handy little uh, storage back there. Now before I uh, switch over to a short clip of the Adventure trike where I have the uh, Ergolux, uh, I'll mention that you don't have to wear special clothes when you're triking. Uh, unlike a bike where you might want to wear padded shorts, completely unnecessary. Uh, so the uh, Ergolux is available with the uh, full fat, but it does have a shorter back and I'll show that to you on the Adventure. On this one, I've chosen to put the uh, Ergolux uh, seat. It has have uh, some ventilation channels in here. You can see for hot days like it is today, but just, wow, super comfy. Uh, I like the way they've kind of shaped it here to keep you feeling like you're secure, uh, very, very comfortable. ICE has lots of options, which is really nice. Here we've got this very comfortable headrest. It's height and angle adjustable. Uh, that's really nice on longer rides as well. This is my evening ride. So I get home from work and it gets late and I'm tired, but I still want to go for a ride and I get on this and it's so relaxing that I end up riding a lot longer than I need to. Other comfort action uh, items here, you've got the wrist rests are optional as well. Again, adjustable as far as the angle and height and that helps again on longer rides. If you do have some mobility issues, they do make straps as well to help keep your hands in place, which is nice. We can uh, configure this with some uh, uh, options to get the seat a little bit closer to the boom if you're a little bit shorter or a little bit further away from the boom if you're taller, which is really cool. I mentioned we've got those helping handles we can add to make it easy to get on and off. We've got the ability to change the uh, seat angle and then we've got lots and lots of storage. So let me talk about the storage options. Okay, so you can see I actually have the uh, rack. So this is a regular uh, pannier rack here. It is actually part of the suspension, so it's uh, going to, it, it, it attaches to the frame here rather than uh, uh, on the swing arm on the back here. So it actually is going to be isolated from the bumps as well. So you do your grocery shopping, your eggs in there, it's gonna have a nice smooth ride. So you could uh, definitely fit uh, one or possibly two uh, probably just one pannier bag on here. There's uh, somewhere for the uh, clip if you wish. Uh, I also optionally added the top rack to it as well. So that's the top part here. I have an MIK adapter that doesn't come with it. I just added that because I've got some MIK bags, but you could put a trunk bag on there. The cool thing is you've got this bar here. You could actually put another set of bags. So you could put two on each side for a total of four plus a trunk bag on top here. So lots and lots of storage, really to handy to have that. In addition to the rack for bags, ICE makes these very, very cool uh, pod bags here. I've got one on each side. Show the 
other side here. These are super clever. So what I love about them is the zippers I can access while I'm riding. So I can sit on here and I can grab my phone or food or whatever I've got in the side here. Easy to access both sides. Um, then i uh, got that reflective uh, tape on the back here which is really great which acts as a bit of a carrying handle because it's really easy to remove. You can see there's a clip here, a clip here, and a clip at the top. And you just pop those off and you can carry it with you. So really easy to get on and on. Those are the optional side pod bags. Now I don't have it installed on the full fat but if you check out the adventure, I'll try to show that to you later, uh, there is a uh, optional pouch that you can put on the back for storage as well and there's even a rain cover that also comes with a pouch that you can use as well. We have the option of adding a, a railing on the side here that allows you to put a handlebar bag. So if you didn't want to use the side pods and you want to use a handlebar bag, you can do that as well. You could even put one on each side, so that's pretty clever. We do have uh, a place for a water bottle, and I've optionally added the uh, riser, which I definitely recommend because it makes that angle just really easy to get that on and off. And this is, of course, the optional ice <laughs> water bottle as well. If hydration is important to you and you want uh, more uh, locations for a water bottle or you don't want this one here because you find that that interferes with getting on and off uh, because you've kind of got two options for getting on and off here. For some of our customers, like for myself, I can very easily lift my leg over and get on that way. Uh, you may find that perhaps the water bottle gets in the way, you don't want that there because on the full fat the boom is a fair bit higher off the ground than the rest of the trikes so that's something to keep in mind. Or some of our customers actually prefer to just back on so you actually kind of line yourself up. So I just kind of line myself up there and step over the boom like that and again if you're trying to do that that water bottle might be in your way so you can just pop it off or all of that to say, if you wish, there's the Aquadoc, which allows you to mount a water bottle cage anywhere on the frame. So we put it here uh, on the seat frame. You could put it on the other side. You could put it up here, wherever you wish. Here is really nice and easy to reach if I'm doing a longer ride and I want access to a second water bottle. So you'll notice on the rear we do have a fender. It's quite dirty. I've been doing some off-road riding. Uh, very stable. Uh, you can see it's kind of attached uh, to the frame down there and to these uh, stays. It keeps it very steady. Uh, steady. Uh, there's no fenders available for the front. So for most people it isn't a problem. Uh, but be careful if you're cornering at high speeds through mud. It's possible that you could get a little bit of spray from that front tire. But most of the time you're not actually going to find that to be a problem. Let's talk a little bit about pedals. When you're configuring the uh, trike you have some options for pedals. What I've gone with here is I've gone with a clipless pedal because I do ride clipless but only on a trike. Uh, I don't actually ride clipless on my bike. I'm always afraid I'm just gonna fall off. <laughs> with clipless the idea is that you've got special shoes. They clip in and now they're stuck in place. Your, your feet are not going to fall off the pedal, which is good because if your foot falls off the pedal and you roll over your foot, uh, that's called foot suck. And yes, in fact, it sucks. You could actually, and I'm, I'm serious here, it, you know, it could break your bones. It could break your foot. There's, you definitely don't want that happening. So you want some way of securing your foot onto the pedal. So for myself, I use shoes that have a clip, clip in, no problem. When I want to remove my foot, all I do is twist my foot a little bit and then it comes out of the clip. Problem with that on a bike is sometimes you forget to twist and you fall off the bike before you get your feet down. On the trike you don't have to take your feet off the pedals when you stop. They can stay there and so it's no problem. So I ride clipless uh, on a uh, trike. But if you don't want to get special shoes um, you could use a strap like this that allows you to put your foot in kind of at an angle and then straighten it out and that holds it in. You could use toe clips and straps as well. But ideally you do want something to keep your feet from sliding down. While we're up at the top here we should talk a little bit about some of the fit options and uh, you'll notice we have an adjustable boom here so we can move the pedals closer to the seat or further away. I've elected to go with the easy adjust uh, option here which means that I don't have to actually change the length of the chain. So if I move the boom all the way in that chain is going to sag too much and so I would need to cut it and make it the right length. Now obviously if you're the only one riding the trike that's not a problem. You put it where you need it and you leave it there and you never adjust it. Because this one is a, a test trike, people can ride it, my wife rides it, I ride it, my kids ride it. Um, I want to be able to adjust it quickly without 
you know, cutting the chain. So they've got this really cool uh, quick adjust here. I open up the uh, two quick release uh, levers on the side here, and then I can pull the boom out or push it in. They've even got numbers on the side here so I can remember which number I'm at and which number, well, I can't remember everybody else's number, so they have to remember their own number. <laughs> and then it makes it really easy to adjust it. Other adjustments, we can actually bring these handlebars closer to the rider or further away from the rider and also adjust the angle so we could bring, these are fairly forward right now, I could bring them more upright. And uh, those all use a quick release, although the uh, there is a, kind of an indexing system in there, kind of teeth that really secures it really tightly. So these are the 170 millimeter crank arms. You can get shorter crank arms if you wish to spin your legs in a smaller circle. So when you're configuring the full fat online, you have uh, the choice of two different tires. Both are the Schwalbe Jumbo Gym. You can either get the 4.8 inch wide tire like I've got here, or a 4.0 inch tire. And why again would you want a tire like this? Well, with the lower pressure, you can run these at a really low pressure, it allows you to float over the sand, uh, snow, beach, etc. It's great for trails, for rolling over logs. The Jumbo Gym tires are actually fairly light. They're actually a fairly fast tire. They're a little bit noisy. You'll hear me coming on this because of the uh, noise from these, but they are fairly grippy. Now in the ride test video, I'll show you some of the things you can do with these tires. One of the things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to change the rear tire here to the Maxxis FBR. Lots of other tire options on there if you want. What that's going to do is it's going to give me even more off-road grip. I mentioned these are fairly fast, right? So uh, the knobs are a little bit smaller nice fast tire but there's some uh, trails I'd like to give a try that is really really very steep very very loose material so I'm going to switch out the rear tire which is where attraction is coming from to something even more aggressive and give that a try having said that there is an opportunity perhaps to go with something less aggressive if you're mostly riding on the pavement you could probably go I, I did some measuring with these uh, rims here uh, these are the Alex rims um, we might be able to go with a, even a three inch wide fat tire instead of a four or 4.8. And they do make actually slick uh, or a very fast uh, fat bike tires as well. So you don't have to go with these jumbo gyms. These are a great kind of all around everything type of tire. Great for uh, off terrain, great for on the road, fast, light, but uh, you could always customize that and change the tire depending on where you're planning on riding. So let's talk about the drivetrain options. On this full fat, I configured it with the Roll-Off Speed Hub. It's a 14-speed internally geared hub. That means all of the gears are inside there. There's no maintenance requirements, no adjustments. Things aren't going to go out of whack. My chain isn't going to fall off. It's not going to shift when it's not supposed to, not shift when it's supposed to. It just works. Roll-Offs last forever. They uh, have roll-offs now with well over 100,000 kilometers on them, and they just last. Now, you do need to change the oil once a year. Pretty straightforward, easy thing to do. We've got a kit for it. Uh, we're happy to help you with it. And this roll-off hub gives you a 520% gear ratio. It's a massive wide gear ratio, makes it really easy. What that means is it gives you a really, really low gear for climbing really, really steep hills. And it gives you really good high gear so you can go really fast if you want. I can pedal past 50, 55 kilometers an hour and not spin too quickly. But at the same time, I can climb really, really steep hills. Now, one of the beautiful things about a internal geared hub aside from the lower maintenance requirement because now you don't have to worry about uh, uh, keeping it clean and adjusting things it also doesn't need to be replaced like a cassette normally does you can also shift while you're stopped so even though we're not moving right now I can twist the whole grip here and this is really cool by the way this is something that uh, ice uh, designed themselves this is the roll-off twist shift but the whole grip shifts uh, twists which is really cool so you can see the little roll-off bird there telling me the gear that I'm in and I can go ahead and shift into my easiest gear to start out with I'm just on flat here so I don't need to be in one five is probably a good starting gear and as I get going faster I can just go ahead and shift now as I mentioned you do need to unload the weight on the pedals so as I'm pedaling I'm gonna briefly stop pedaling and then shift and that'll help it shift a lot smoother or you can go with a more traditional system the derailleur system here we do use a bar end shifter, super easy to figure out how to use, just to pull that towards you or push it away from you to change gears. Again, you need to do that while you're uh, pedaling. Um, I don't love the bar end shifters personally because I ride a lot, I ride a lot of rough stuff, and they seem to go out of adjustment from time to time. So every few weeks I seem to be kind of adjusting it. Uh, maybe it's because it's a relatively new trike and the cable's still stretching, but 
I, I don't love the bar end shifter. It's okay, it works. It's very intuitive. If you're writing a lot of rough stuff, maybe worth going with the electronic shifting. And if you do that, then instead of this uh, 10 speed, which I put on here, and you could even go with an eight speed, but you know what? It's an eight speed 11 to 32 tooth cassette. The 10 speed 11 to 36 isn't that much more expensive. It definitely gives you a much better climbing gear here in Ladysmith, you know, we got lots of hills. So I would say spend the extra, get the Dior 10 speed, or if you don't mind invest the investment, go on an 11 speed with that electronic shifting. So here's an adventure with the Shimano Di2 XT electronic shifting with an 11 to 46 tooth cassette. You can see that's a massive climbing gear there. It makes it really easy to climb pretty much anything. It's electronic shifting. I'm loving it compared to the bar end shifters because it's a perfect shift every time. It never goes out of adjustment. Basically up here at the front now you have an extra set of buttons. So the top row of buttons here is controlling the uh, level of assistance from the uh, drive unit and down here is controlling your uh, electronic shifting. So you can see right now I'm in uh, uh, first gear. It shows you along here which gears you're in which is pretty cool. And so I just press that button. Boom it shifted to uh, second third I can press and hold and it multi shifts now I'll put it back down in one because technically speaking like a regular drivetrain system you shouldn't try to shift while you stop because when you start pedaling you're gonna get a little bit of grinding now with that electronic shifting it is so reliable that we have had a few customers that you know have been in a position where they forgot to downshift before they stopped they shifted while they were stopped kind of gentle on the pedals and it actually shifted pretty well for them same thing you shouldn't uh, shift under a heavy heavy load but uh, it turns out it's uh, working out uh, really well for that you know and I love what ice has done with this they've got their own kind of braided uh, cable here this is an electronic cable so you don't have to worry about it stretching or going out of alignment and it's just gonna give you perfect shifts every time I'm loving that uh, especially compared to the bar end shifters I found were a little finicky they're okay I'm just not used to them but the uh, electronic shifting is beautiful the only downside is uh, trying to remember that the top row of buttons is for your assistance the bottom row of buttons is for the uh, gear shifting we could probably relocate one over to the other side and one over here uh, but uh, once you get used to it it's pretty good if you find that you're concerned that this twisting motion might be difficult if you've got some wrist issue wrist, uh, wrist issues or arthritis or something like that uh, then the electronic shifting can be really nice because it is just a push button Related to the drivetrain is the number of teeth on your chainring up front. On here I've got a 44 tooth, but if you were to, because with the roll off I don't need to go with the smaller chainring to give me more hill climbing capability, and that's usually what you would do. You could go with a, a uh, 38 tooth, that's going to give you more hill climbing capability. You won't be able to go as fast, in other words your legs will start spinning too quickly. Um, so if you decided to go with that 8 speed or that 10 speed with the 11 to 32 or 11 to 36 tooth cassette, then you might want to get the... Um, 38 tooth uh, chain ring to make it easier to climb hills. But if you go with the DI2 electronic shifting or the roll off like I did, then the 44 here is going to be just fine because uh, it's going to give you that faster speed but also the ability to climb really steep hills. So in my full fat I chose to go with mechanical disc brakes rather than drum brakes. Disc brakes are more effective. You do have to replace the pads you know more frequently maybe once a year is probably when I'm doing them uh, whereas a drum brake is more aerodynamic and will last a bit longer but they're not as effective and honestly with those 4.8 inch wide tires on there and this big profile I wasn't too concerned about being aerodynamic. You'll also find that uh, pretty much any bike shop in the world is going to be able to work on uh, mechanical disc brakes for you. Uh, the drum brakes are a little bit more of a specialized thing. They might not have the parts in stock. We also have a parking brake on here and this is an actual uh, brake. It's a, again a disc brake on the back there. Uh, you've got two options for a parking brake and a parking brake is important because if I park on a slope I don't want to have to hold on to the brake levers the whole time. I want to put my parking brake on like I've done here. Just push that all the way down. Now it's released. Pull it all the way up and now I'm set the parking brake. Now I'm not going to roll away so if I park on a hill want to watch the sunset or just enjoy the view um, I don't want to have to hold on to those brake levers. Uh, your other option is uh, believe it or not a velcro strap. <laughs> so instead of you hanging onto the brake levers the velcro strap does. Uh, it saves you a little bit of money but it's a little fiddly because you know you have to get the straps out and put them on and make sure they're tight and then release them. Uh, having the, uh, the lever there is definitely a lot easier uh, and personally I think it's a better way to go. 
Now for safety, we do have uh, lights integrated. That's a choice that you can make. You can put your own lights on if you w wish, but I love having a nice bright rear and a very uh, bright uh, front light here uh, built in running off of the main battery so I don't have to worry about recharging it. I don't have to remember to bring it along. They're permanently mounted. They're always there. They're running off the battery. They don't need to be uh, recharged and I'm able to uh, uh, ride at night uh, and uh, also it helps uh, to keep me more visible in traffic because uh, cars are more likely to see those lights. Of course I've got the flag and like I said a pretty pretty big visual uh, footprint here but it's definitely nice having those lights built in running off of your main battery. I like the fact that you know they're wired through the whole system here you don't see uh, wires dangling down even uh, the back rack here uh, it, the wiring is actually running through the rack and then we do have a quick release here. I'll talk about that in, in a few moments, but if you're uh, wanting to fold and unfold it, or if you want to take this top rack off, there's a quick release here that you can actually just take that top rack off. So that's uh, just all these little details are really nice uh, that shows that they're really paying attention to how these are being used. So one of the reasons you may want to take that top rack off, and it isn't necessary, but the uh, full fat, like all the rest of the ice trikes, actually has a compact twist fold mechanism. So to make that happen, I'll just briefly explain it and then we'll try to get a video for you of me actually doing it at some point. But basically you can see there are a couple quick releases under the seat. Here they are right there and there. Open those up, take the seat off, and once the seat is off, over on the other side here, I'll show you that, there is, a, we'll want to take the battery off as well if you're folding it. Uh, where did our, here we go, there's a lever under here, hard to see under there, let's see, point it out to you, there we go, it's right there. Open up this uh, quick release lever and uh, kind of pull it, it's a kind of a safety mechanism, you have to actually pull it out. And then what happens is this whole back end is going to lift and as it lifts it's going to twist and it's going to lay flat right where the seat was and so it becomes very uh, small. And now if you have this top rack on here, the problem is that when it folds it's uh, going to rest on top of the wheels here because it's really high. So if you really wanted to get it much lower, you could take the top rack off. It's not a big deal. Uh, the other thing you'd want to do when you're folding it is kind of get these handlebars down lower angle so that everything is nice and compact. And then you open up the quick release on the boom there, push that in. Now you have a really nice compact size, making it easy to bring along with you wherever you want to go. Okay, and before I take you out on a ride test, I will mention some of the other accessories that are available. We've got this lovely ice trike here. It's got lots of reflective uh, uh, material in it here to keep you seen, and you can even put some uh, tassels in there for ribbons if you wanted to do that. We've got a mirror, which is really handy. You could actually put a mirror on the other side as well. They've got these uh, bar accessories that allow you to put a bar and then any accessories on like you would on a handlebar. So I put a mirror, but uh, you can put a bell, uh, for example, or your phone or anything like that. Those are pretty handy. And uh, because this is an off-road capable bike, I also configured it with a bash guard. So you can see this is protecting the front end. I don't know in the end if it was really necessary because you know, that's pretty high up off the ground. Mind you, if I'm going around down a really steep slope and then climb back up or something, I suppose there's a possibility that I might bash that. So just to be on the safe side, put a bash guard on there as well. Lots of options. <laughs> Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Feel free to call or email if you have more specific questions about it. Come with me on the ride test. I think you're going to have a lot of fun. Head over to our website at citruscycles.ca to find our contact info so you can schedule an appointment to come try it for yourself. Okay, so we'll start the ride test on pavement. It's wet pavement, which is great. I always love uh, testing bikes when it's wet and rainy and gives you a good idea of the traction and handling of the bike. And of course, with this trike with these fat tires, this is the uh, full fat with the uh, 4.8 inch wide Jumbo Gym tires. You can have loads of traction and uh, riding in adverse conditions is really when the bike shines. 
Now you may be wondering, well, why would we even ride on, on pavement with this bike? You know, isn't it designed for off-road? Really, this is an incredibly versatile trike and uh, it's ideal for everything, really. So, you know, we have the full fat here. We have the adventure. I have a video review of it on our website. My wife and I love to go uh, riding together. I'll always ride the adventure because she's not willing to give up the full fat. She absolutely loves riding this. And it's funny because I think to myself, you know, we'll, we'll be out for a ride and I'll think, oh, you know, I really love the adventure. This is great. And, you know, so much fun. And it is a super great bike. I think, oh, maybe this is my favorite. And then, you know, we'll get back. And I'll be like, well, you know, I'm going to try the full fat now that you're done riding. It's like, oh, this is such a great bike as well. And, you know, for her, one of the things she loves about it, and you notice as soon as you get on, is uh, it's a little bit higher up, so you don't feel like really low to the ground. It's important to her to feel really safe. Uh, speaking of safe, I'll pick up on that in a second there. You can't tell in the video, I'm actually signaling a right-hand turn here. So I'm going down a bit of a hill, and I'm signaling with my left hand and braking with my right hand, and it had no impact at all on the uh, handling or the steering. And that's what uh, ICE calls their uh, no steer braking. So you would think that if you only brake one wheel, you know, that it's going to impact on the, the steering. It doesn't. I actually was able to very successfully just use one hand on the rear, on the right brake and um, signal with my left hand and not have it uh, impact on the uh, steering. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, a uh, bit of a hill there. I'll get up to a bigger hill soon I'll talk to you about that but riding position yeah you're fairly uh, high uh, but not in a way that uh, makes it unstable and you'll see that in the throughout the ride test I'll do some faster speeds and corners and stuff like that very very stable and that's you know important to a lot of people to my wife especially she wants to feel really safe very confident very stable and that's part of why she loves this bike I apologize, I'm going to keep calling it a bike, but it is a trike. I'll get those uh, confused. Uh, hopefully you know what I'm talking about anyways. She loves this because, uh, yeah, you know, you are a little bit higher up, so she feels that she's got more visibility. And certainly visibility isn't a concern. A lot of times people ask me, uh, and I'll talk about that again a little bit while, a little bit later about uh, safety on the road. And that's what she loves about this. She's a little bit higher, very visible. These massive tires on the side here that uh, really help you feel very, very safe. And it looks like I may have to take a detour here. I might not be able to get through here. We'll see. So this bit of road here, you can see lots of uh, potholes, broken pavement. And that's where having the f tires and the suspension. Yeah, looks like road is closed. All right. To find a different way today for the ride test. <laughs> now, I apologize. There's going to be a couple times in the video here. The camera was shaking there. Um, in order to get the camera to kind of work here, uh, I mounted it on a bar end accessory and in order to get the angle right I had to have it pretty close to the tire so when I do a really tight uh, corner uh, that's probably going to rub a little bit on the tire because these are fairly wide tires and cause the camera to shake. Normally what I would do is tilt that bar end in a little bit so that we don't have the uh, problem of uh, rubbing at all. Um, but uh, then you'd be looking the wrong way so I apologize for that and there may be some times on a trail ride where I do have to tilt that in in order to do some tight corners so change of plans I'll head back this way and uh, find some other ways to go for for the video here that is the nice thing about having a capable bike like this is I can really go wherever I want here's another bit of a hill put it up to a boost and certainly uh, hills on a regular recumbent trike tend you tend to be slower than on a bike uh, i don't know if it's three wheels or what it is but that's the nice thing about having the um 
Shimano steps. I've got the E8000 on this one. It gives you lots of torque, so I had really no problems going up that hill. I'm using the roll-off hub on this one as well, which is great. Really gives me a really good low climbing gear. Didn't need it for that hill. It wasn't that steep. Here's another example of that no brake steer where I'm going to be signaling a left turn and braking with one hand. No problem at all. And of course these wide tires give me lots and lots of uh, stability. And really that's uh, one of the great things about the trike is you have so much stability because of these nice wide tires, you've got a very wide stance as well, which makes it really easy to uh, have a lot of uh, control and stability. Not really worried about uh, wheel lift uh, going around corners, which is nice. Obviously, go fast enough and turn tight enough, you can probably get a bit of wheel lift, but you know, even there, nothing at all as far as wheel lift goes. Ah, here's uh, something interesting. Coming up to the traffic lights here. I usually don't ride this way because there are um, sensors in the road to trigger the lights and none of my bikes or trikes will trigger those sensors. So you kind of get stuck here forever waiting for that light to turn. With the full fat, I actually seem to have enough width, or I'm not sure what it is, but this will actually trigger the uh, sensors for the traffic light, so that's pretty cool. So here's an example of why I feel actually safer in the trike than in a bike. Heading through the traffic circle, I take up a lot of room. That's actually a good thing. No one's going to try to squeeze by me. Believe it or not, they do that on my bike. Try to take the lane in the traffic circle, come back out, or any of the traffic calming, or any of those types of things. And people will often try to squeeze by you on your bike when it's not safe to pass. You know, there'll be cars coming. They'll just pass anyway, because they think you don't need that much room. Well, in fact, to be safe, I need as much room on my bike as I do on the trike here. But the trike, it's very obvious. You see, people see me coming. Uh, you know, I've got the flag, but with these 26 by 4.8 wide tires, you know, everybody sees me coming. A lot of people smile. They give me a wide burst. They don't pass until it's safe to pass. It's really surprising. I thought that would be one of my concerns. Certainly for my wife, she was concerned like, ooh, so low to the ground. and take up so much room and it's been great you know it really forces people to treat you with a lot of respect they see you coming they give you a wide berth I have no concerns about visibility at all and I feel safer on on the trike than on a bike you know we're heading into the fall We'll see if we get winter here on Vancouver Island this year or not. Part of me doesn't, you know, want snow, but part of me is like, this is going to be a great trike for the snow because, again, I'll be very stable, very safe on it by having, you know, three wheels on the ground. I won't be worrying about falling over. I could put studded tires on it. Actually, I'm going to head down to the beach there, which is where I was trying to go originally. And uh, find a big hill for you, maybe some sand.
Again, love having the roll off here. I didn't uh, downshift before I stopped, so now I can go ahead and shift into five and it'll be no problem getting started when the light changes here. So speaking of tires, I've got the uh, Jumbo Jims on here right now, the 4.8 inch. These are actually a nice tire. They're fast rolling. Um, fairly grippy. My wife really enjoys having them. They do make a bit of noise. I don't know if you can hear that in the video. There's definitely uh, some noise going on here from the uh, tires. And so, you know, we've looked at the possibility if you're mostly riding on pavement and hard pack gravel and that sort of thing, then uh, we could go with a slicker or narrower tire. You know, you could go with a 4.0 uh, or you could even go with a um, probably a three inch if you wanted to. They do make uh, kind of slick fat bike tires, so they'd be a little bit quieter, a little less rolling resistance. I gotta say though, these really, I'm surprised at how fast, you know, you can get rolling on here. I've just been coasting, getting uh, up to 28, 29 kilometers an hour. They're not a slow tire by any means. I've been really impressed with them. As we head into winter, if we do end up with some snow, then I may end up going with a snow tire. Even a, a studded tire might be a good option to, to consider. And uh, if you do a lot of off-road riding, then uh, you may want to think about uh, getting something a little bit more... Um, Uh, knobby, uh, a little bit more uh, traction. These are pretty good. I'm going to go through some grass here. There's some sand up here to show you again what you can do with these tires. Go. Yeah, no problem because you can go really low on the pressure on these. You can go 5 psi. And basically, you're just going to kind of float. You're not sinking in. I'll go back so you can see. I'll try to angle the camera down. You can, you know, barely make out the uh, tread, there we go, of uh, the tires because really I'm not sinking it at all. I'm just kind of floating there. Get that back for you. So, you know, coming to a standstill and then starting again, no problem with the uh, sand at all. So if you're planning on riding on the beach, wow, this would be great. One of the things I'll point out, probably I'll repeat myself a lot in the video, and I apologize for that. One of the things that, um, I mean, this is a good example of one of the great things about a trike is I, there's a nice view here. I just sit and stop and I'm still in the same position as when I'm riding. So on my regular bike, I, I don't often stop because I don't like getting off and on and starting and stopping. And with a trike, you know, I really had to teach myself to just relax. Like to, when you see something nice, just go ahead, stop, put the parking brake on. That's what I've done. I just put the parking brake on here and I don't have to get out of my seat. And when I'm ready to go, I just release the parking brake and roll. So it, it's great. There's also no minimum speed. So, you know, in that example I was giving, if you decide, hey, I'm gonna go, um, you know, ride at the beach for a while. Uh, you can go as slow as you want. You know, on a, on a regular bike, you're kind of concerned. You got to keep your speed up or you're going to fall over. You don't want to do that. So you really focus on, you know, making sure that uh, you can keep your speed up. And, you know, maybe you're missing out on looking around and enjoying. And that's one of the surprising things for me about the trike was uh, I don't have to look where I'm going so much. I mean, obviously, you don't want to run over a rabbit or something <laughs> accidentally, which I've almost done a few times. Um, but you don't have to, on a bike, if you think about it, you're actually expending some energy looking ahead and making sure that you're not going to fall off, keeping your balance. And, uh, you know, here, um, you're not going to fall off. You're not going to lose your balance. I mean, you can lose your balance, but you're not going to fall off. So um, you can just go ahead and go as slow as you want and look around and really, you know, just kind of enjoy uh, being out. And uh, that's one of the, the great things about the trike compared to a bike is, you know, I probably wouldn't be doing this kind of thing on my bike, but it's like, oh, you know, let's just head out onto the beach and roll around. I can go as slow as I want. I can, you know, roll over the logs if I need to, um, you know, head out to the water if I really wanted to do that. 
So if you live somewhere where you have the opportunity to ride on the beach like this, it's super fun. The only strange thing is anytime you're on a beach generally, you know, there's going to be a slope down to the water. And so I'm a little bit off camber right now. And so that can be, uh, you know, a little bit of a disconcerting feeling. But, uh, you know, eventually you get used to it and you realize, yeah, I'm not going to tip, even though it feels a little bit like I might. I'm not. I'm really impressed with these tires so far i haven't lost traction and this is actually like really really soft here i'm gonna end up kind of uh hitting the camera again with this corner here let me um just uh, stop and adjust that for a second okay so i've adjusted that a little bit we'll see if we can avoid hitting you with the tire uh, certainly when i don't have a camera on it's a lot easier obviously to adjust things so you don't have to worry about that all right, now I haven't given my, the tide's coming in here. I haven't given myself much uh, room to um, maneuver here as far as turning radius goes, especially since, again, I'm trying to avoid um, hitting the camera there. So here's one of the cool things you can do with this trike is if you need to back up, you just grab onto the tires as if it's a wheelchair I guess you can't see that in the video here, but basically I'm just grabbing onto the tires, roll myself backwards, and there we go. Now I've got it able to turn a little bit tighter here without going into the ocean. There we go. I can hear a little bit of slipping in my back tire there, but not enough to stop me. So there we go. That was really a lot of fun. Now the great thing about this, you know, is that basically I've got the beach chair with me. Way more comfortable than a beach chair. <laughs> it's always with me. And that's a great thing about riding the uh, trike super comfortable i've got the headrest i've got the armrest and i can just sit here and enjoy the view don't even have to bring a chair along There we go. Now, if you do end up riding through the water, I didn't today, but if you do that, uh, you know, especially in salt water, then, uh, you know, you'll want to make sure that you uh, give it a good cleaning when you get back. You don't want salt water getting in everywhere. But other than that, it's, uh, you know, obviously very capable of those kinds of things. I was curious about the wet grass coming up there if I'd run into problems. No problems with traction there either, so that's great. All right, well, that was a fun little detour. More fun than I expected. I'm gonna have to come back and do that again. I've got a big hill coming up here. A little one. Ah, well, let's see. I if I can make it up with the wet grass up this way, so I'm gonna First pop up onto this curb, there we go. Oh yeah, no problem, we're all right up there. That's the great thing about the trike, is you literally can crawl. Again, there's no minimum speed. You don't have to worry about uh, going too slow and tipping over. So yeah, I just, you know, rolled right up to that curb, popped up and popped up the hill. Got it on boost for the hill. It's not a particularly steep hill. I'm gonna go under a tunnel, mainly with the GPS. I'm hoping that at least part way up the next hill, it'll show you the uh, grade so you can see how steep it is. It's another common question people have as well. It's so wide, and especially the fat version here, you know, the adventure is much narrower. This is very wide. Am I gonna be big through barriers on the trails? 
And so far, I've been able to make it through all the barriers and all the trails I ride. It hasn't been a problem, which is quite surprising. But I guess when you think about it, you know, the width of my tires isn't that much wider than the bars on my mountain bike. So it's not like I need that much more room. Okay, so going back to the GPS here, uh, the speed won't be accurate when I'm climbing hills or descending hills. It's not smart enough for whatever reason to measure the speed over the slope of the hill. It's kind of measuring it as if I were going flat. So it'll usually be uh, lower than I'm actually going, but hopefully the gradient is there. Another barrier, just roll right through it. Roll off the curb, no problem. Put it on boost for the big hill here. And I may need to put it in easier gear again with the roll off. Really easy to do that. The only thing with the roll off to keep in mind is that this is a mechanical twist shift. You do have to ease off on the pedaling, if not uh, stop completely when you're shifting in order to facilitate the shift. So right now I'm in the easiest gear. I'm doing about seven kilometers an hour. It's actually too easy of a gear. I think I'm spinning fairly quickly. Well, not too bad, 81 RPM for my cadence. It's handy having the little cadence uh, indicator on the display here. Certainly, you know, rolling up the hills, it's a bit of a technique I had to learn. It's a different set of muscle group than on a bike. First few rides on the trike, I was slow. I was tired at the end of it. I thought, what is wrong with me? I'm so out of shape. Usually I don't get tired riding. Usually I don't have sore muscles. After a few days of riding, kind of built up that new muscle group, a little bit different. Started to find my average speed increased quite a bit. And uh, found I was able to get up the hills much easier. Again though, the nice thing is you don't have to you know, necessarily be super fit, put it on boost, but crawl up as slow as you want. Stop and have a rest, put the park parking brake on. It's no problem. So with the roll off, I've got lots of gears, so I can uh, put it into 14. I can pedal probably past 40, 50 kilometers an hour. No problem, maybe even up to 60 and still provide some input to it. In fact, I'll, I'll do one more hill here. I'll do a long, not terribly steep, but just a long hill, just to show you what I mean as far as being able to get your speed up if you wish. One of the really interesting things is that, uh, you know, my wife definitely is not keen on speed. She just loves exploring and enjoying the sights and, you know, not uh, interested in racing or anything like that. And so for her, it's very relaxing. And for me too, it's super relaxing. You know, you're in such a comfortable position. But if you want, it can also be very thrilling. So, you know, you're lower to the ground, so everything feels faster. You can get going pretty quick. One of my customers said, uh, well, it's interesting because I've had some customers say, well, you know, it's like uh, riding in a, in a Easy Boy. And other customers have said, hey, it's like riding a go-kart. So it's really up to you.
All right, so I was able to get up to what, uh, 58, yeah, 58 kilometers an hour going down there, and I kept pedaling. And uh, you know, my cadence got a little bit high, about 110 RPM at one point. But that's pretty impressive that at uh, almost 60 kilometers an hour, if you want to be crazy and get up a lot of speed and wear yourself out, like I did, you can keep pedaling. And that's one of the nice things with that roll-off hub is it gives you such a wide gear ratio that at the same time, I can easily climb really steep hills. But while I'm climbing the steep hills, I've got a nice low gear, but I've got a high gear for going fast. Okay, now we're gonna do a little bit of riding on the uh, Couch and Valley Trail, part of the Great Trail, or the Stocking Creek Trail. And you'll notice we've got a lot of barriers in the way here, but it's not a problem to just roll right through them. The nice thing is that with the trike, since there is no minimum speed... Hello! Hello! Yeah, the great thing is there's no one minimum speed so I can go as slowly as I want, line myself up, and roll right through the barriers. Morning. Good, how are you? It's a lot of fun. So, this is one of the perfect uses, you know, for, for trikes in general. Let me point the camera up here. You can see the fall colors. I'm sitting here reclined. I've got the headrest. I'm just looking around and enjoying it. And it didn't take me long to actually completely fall in love with recumbent trikes. I'm new to this, uh, you know, up until we started carrying ice. I just rode a bike. I had no idea how awesome this could be, how much fun it could be, how enjoyable it is. I'm having so much fun and it seems everybody else is too when I'm on my trike because everybody smiles and waves. Hello! Thank you! Good morning! You know, everywhere I go, there's people smiling and waving at me, which is great, but I'm having such a great time. Uh, you know, I probably put about, uh, what, six or 700 kilometers on, yeah, almost 700 kilometers on the full fat here, probably six or 700 kilometers on the adventure too, just in a matter of weeks, because I just completely, you know, fell in love with it. It's so fun, so enjoyable, so relaxing. I mean, obviously, I'm just, you know, going pretty slowly along here. If I really want to push myself, I can do that. I can go fast. I can cover a lot of ground. It's not a problem. You know, but sometimes it's good to just kind of slow down and look around and enjoy, you know, the beauty that's around here. Rest my head back and look up around and, you know, that's one of the things I found. Uh, with the uh, trike is I really started noticing a lot more than I did on a bike. I guess because I'm lower, so I see things from a different perspective. Uh, but I'm also able to let my attention wander a lot more. I'm able to look around the side. I'll do a section of a video with a helmet camera on. <laughs> if I get dizzy, if I want to skip that section, because I'm going to try not to move my head around a lot, but I just do naturally on the trike because, you know, I'm not worried about falling off. I can just keep rolling, look around, really take things in. It's been such an enjoyable, relaxing experience. Great way to go touring, great way to see, look around. Excellent for long rides because you're not going to get sore. You're not going to get a sore butt. You're not going to have sore shoulders and arms and wrists and all those things that a longer ride get sore. With this, you know, you're just so comfortable. You can ride all day. The other nice thing is that it encourages you to stop and, and rest and look around and take things in and enjoy it. I mean, this is just such a beautiful section of the trail here. And it's so easy to stop. 
and look around, it really helps you to do those longer rides. Let me pop onto the side trail here. Again, we may have some camera rub, and I apologize for that. There we go. Normally, like I said, it's not an issue, because normally I don't have to worry about the camera on there. So I've taken my wife through here a few times. She really enjoyed it. She's not a mountain biker. So to bring her on here on a regular bike, she doesn't say that was really fun. She's like, oh, that was really stressful because I had to watch out for those roots and the rocks and pay attention and hope that I don't fall off and injure myself. And, you know, I get that. I mean, I ride my bike on here and to me it's fun and thrilling. Uh, but for some of some people, some of our customers, my wife, it's like, no, that's not their idea of a good time. They want to, you know, enjoy and relax. And so she's been on here and she thought it was fantastic because, you know, she's not worried about those rocks and roots. You just roll right over them. No problem. You're not going to fall. You're not going to hurt yourself. Go as slowly or as quickly as you wish. Another customer that came on here with it, he's a bit of a maniac, you know, hardcore mountain biker. And he loved it because, you know, he could really give her and it was a very thrilling ride for him. Now, I don't know if I'm getting any dirt on the camera there. I have a rear fender, which is awesome. Uh, Ice doesn't make a front fender yet. I've talked to them about that. Um, I'm probably the only guy that would appreciate it because I ride in the pouring rain all the time. And uh, the only time that I miss having the front fender here is if I'm going through a mud puddle and cornering, <laughs> then you can get a little bit of spray. If you're going straight or relatively straight, of course, the spray just goes up in the air beside you and doesn't hit you, but you go too fast through a corner uh, and uh, with, with a puddle you might get a little bit of spray on you, but you know, that just makes it more fun. But hopefully you're enjoying this as much as I am. You're certainly welcome to come and take one for a test ride. Uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by both the Adventure, which I've got a separate video review of on our website, and the Full Fat. So much you can do with it. Let me do a couple more little hills here for you, and then I think I'll have given you a good idea of what you can do. So uh, you want to have a thrill, that's where, you know, the thrilling aspect can come in. That can be a lot of fun going down there. But you're very stable. Another great example of what you can do with the trike. The first time I came up here, I'm used to riding the roll-off e-shift. So I got to about here and needed to shift. And I shifted the wrong way because I'm not used to the twist shift, I'm used to the e-shift. So that's a great example of what you can do with a trike. I can stop right in the middle here, no problem. And with a roll off, I can shift while I'm stopped, shift to the easier gear and no problem, keep on rolling. So it was a good uh, example, a reminder for me of some of the benefits of the recumbent electric trike and uh, having the roll off. Actually, let me uh, go back up that hill I was just on, just to show you again uh, what you can do as far as hill climbing power goes. I expect I might have a little bit of uh, rear wheel slippage on there because it is wet, a little bit loose, but we'll give it a try. Back over the bridge, and again, what a great place to stop and look and enjoy the scenery. And of course, the parking brake is super handy to have. Got a bit of a side trail here. Some roots and rocks to avoid, no problem. Can roll right over them. Sometimes with three wheels, it's harder to avoid things, but with these fat tires, you really can just roll over whatever you need to. 
suspension is fantastic. Uh, you know, like, I don't know if you can see on the video here, there's a lot of roots in here. Between the tires and the suspension and the seat, it's very comfortable. No problems. All right, here's the climb. It gets uh, steeper at the end, levels out a little bit here. I'm hoping, I think there's a fair bit of tree cover, so we might not see the gradient on the camera, but it is uh, quite steep. I'm gonna get into one here, roll right along. You know, I'm going six kilometers an hour, five, no worries. Just go ahead and spin right up. Not actually pushing very hard in that first gear. I'm just spinning a little bit. Really easy. No problem to climb right up there. So that was so much fun. I'm going to go back down. <laughs> So the full fat works really well on pavement. It would make a great commuting trike, a great exploring, touring, kind of adventuring trike. Works really well on trails as well. And so I'll try to take you on a variety of trails. Uh, but uh, so far I haven't found anything that I can't roll over <laughs> with this trike. And by roll over, I mean that I can roll right over it, not that I'm falling off. <laughs> Certainly I haven't been able to roll over in terms of uh, get myself uh, some wheel lift and falling out. Uh, obviously you could, but uh, once you kind of get a sense of the capabilities of the trike, which are very exceptional, you don't really have to worry about that. But uh, certainly logs and things like that, no problem to uh, get over. Not sure if I'll be able to find any logs down on the uh, trail today. Here's a nice narrow opening. No problem, get through there. They've closed some of the trails in the uh, park here for habitat restorations. So uh, the ones that did have uh, logs down on them probably are closed now. So we'll just have to be satisfied with the curb that I rolled over earlier and uh, some of the roots and rocks on here. One of the things I'm always concerned about is making sure that uh, we're not doing any damage to trails. One of the nice things about the uh, fat tires here is especially when you're running them in low pressure, uh, you know, you can go back through some of the muddier, wetter sections and you won't even see evidence that it rolled through there because, uh, you know, most of the weight is distributed over such a wide, three wide tires that uh, really has very little impact on the trail, which is nice. There'll be some tight corners in here and I may end up with some uh, rubbing of the camera on the uh, tire again. I apologize for that. There's some sticks, roots, no problem. Having the, uh, here's a big root, pop over that, no problem. Again, <clears throat> at first it feels weird because you're, you know, one of your tires is lifting way higher than the other. And you think, oh man, I'm going to fall off. You won't. <laughs> it takes a lot to really get enough of an angle before you are going to have a problem. The suspension is fantastic. That's part of what gives you that stability. Sure, it's, you know, making it a lot more comfortable and smooth, um, but it's also keeping the wheels on the ground. And that's a really important feature of having the full suspension. It's not just for comfort, but it does give you traction, stability and control. It's you just crawl right over things and still have uh, lots of traction. And of course the seat itself does give you some suspension. Uh, don't, I'm not sure that I really subscribe to the theory. Sometimes people will get a fully rigid recumbent trike and say, well, you know, the seat's giving me lots of suspension and certainly it is, but it's not giving you the traction and it's not really giving you as much suspension, especially stuff like this, where I'm going over a lot of roots and sticks and rocks. Have, there's no real substitute for having that suspension to keep your three wheels on the ground all the time. But certainly the uh, seat does give you a lot of comfort as well. And even, you know, your own body, your weight is now distributed over a much larger surface area than just your, uh, than just your hands and your butt and your feet. I've got my whole, you know, 
body, upper body, relaxed in this uh, comfortable chair, spreading out my weight. So when I go over bumps, it's not as jarring. I don't have, you know, all of my weight coming down. I'm not using my legs as my suspension. I've got the chair to do that. And so it becomes a lot less fatiguing as well going over rougher terrain. Just that's what my wife found is she's, you know, willing to do all those things because she feels more confident and safer. Uh, but also it's just, it is more fun. You're not being thrown around as much, at least in a way that makes you really, really sore. <laughs> Whew, there we go. It again, <laughs> right wheel came way up there over a bump. And you have that moment of, oh no, I'm going to fall, but uh, you're not. <laughs> it takes, takes just time. You know, the more you ride, the more you become comfortable with the uh, capabilities and capacity of the uh, trike. Well, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, it's been interesting for me. Like I said, I put six or seven kilometers on the trike already. So I've done a lot of riding and that's something I don't always mention in my ride test videos. I, you know, edit them down. I only do a few minutes, but I've already put in many cases, many, many hours getting a sense of what you can and can't do and uh, just uh, really, you know, getting an understanding. And uh, so I've done that uh, with this and continue to ride it because it's so much fun. I really can't um, overemphasize how enjoyable of an experience this is. So if you'd like to try it for yourself, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. There you'll find our contact info so you can call us, you can email us, you can send in your questions, set up an appointment to come try uh, it here in Ladysmith on Vancouver Island. And uh, we also can, uh, I think we've got most of the pricing on the website. It's a bit tricky because they're completely custom made, right? So you can choose all of your options and that's where it's best to reach out to us and we're happy to help you make those decisions. All that's on our website at citruscycles.ca. Okay, so I've switched to my helmet cam for this segment of the video. I'm going to do my best not to move my head around too much and make you dizzy. Uh, if you find that it's uh, too disconcerting, you can skip ahead uh, when I go back to the uh, camera being mounted on the trike. I thought this would give you an interesting perspective. So starting this section of the ride with another climb here. And just wanted to show you, like, I can stop actually in the middle of the climb I can put it in my first gear and I can go as slowly as I want I don't have to worry about uh, tipping over obviously with the minimum speed like you would on a bike you know so I'm doing five kilometers an hour right now super easy but if I want to push myself you know I can shift there a little bit and I can spin up you know and I can climb this hill maybe 15 16 kilometers an hour it's nice having that choice, you know, at the end of a really long ride, if you're tired and you've got a big hill ahead of you, no problem, take your time. Starting out on the ride and just want to go fast, you can do that as well. It takes a little bit of uh, getting used to figuring out, you know, the right gears and the spinning versus pushing and all of those kinds of things. And that uh, is part of just learning, you know, your riding style and getting your trike legs as we call them. You can see there's some nice views from up here. That's the interesting thing about uh, the helmet cam is you'll notice that I probably, despite me trying not to, move my head around quite a bit more than I would on a bike because it's not as crucial that I really pay attention to what's ahead of me. Obviously, you know, I don't want to run into anything. That, that would be bad. But I can, uh, you know, look around a little bit and not worry about falling off my bike and losing my balance. And those types of things that you don't consciously think about on a bike, but to actually take up some of your subconscious uh, capacity, I, I uh, suppose you could say. So these tires and the suspension is handling really well. You can see we've got a lot of big kind of rocks here and I'm getting jostled around a little bit, but 
between the tires, the suspension, and the seat, you know, you've got a lot of comfort there, a lot to keep you on the trike, You're not worried about tipping or falling off or hitting a big stone and kind of getting thrown. There's a nice thing about the roll off while I'm coasting down the hill, I can kind of switch to the gear that I need to to climb the next hill. One of the disadvantages with the roll off is you'll notice that as I'm shifting to an easier gear going up the hill, I do have to interrupt my pedaling slightly. So I, you know, kind of have to work on getting that timing right because I don't want to lose too much momentum heading up the hill. Again, no problem getting around barriers. There's a fair bit of loose gravel back on that hill going down and I wasn't worried about kind of wiping out on that either. It's nice, but a lot less to worry about on the uh, trike. here on Vancouver Island, here in Ladysmith. It was about three above zero. A little warm up, but I wouldn't be surprised as we gain some elevation here, we start seeing some ice in the puddles or a little bit of frost on the road. And again, it's a good reminder, illustration of the benefits of the three wheels. You know, I was saying the other day, as we head into winter, this, you know, last winter I ended up, ended up with more snow than we usually have here in Ladysmith. I ended up having to ride a fat bike to get around, because I'm generally not driving. And I'm actually uh, not, not that I'm looking forward to there being snow, I'm hoping there won't be. Uh, but if there is, or if I head up here, there's just a little bit of elevation gain, there's often snow in the winter. It's actually going to be a lot more enjoyable on the fat trike because one of the challenges with a fat bike is just keeping your balance, keeping your momentum up. A lot of times you'll get into some deep snow and just kind of peter out, and, you know, have to hop off the bike. With the trike won't have that problem. So I'm looking forward to, if I need to, having a nice stable vehicle to get me through the snow. into the forest here it's still a little bit dark it's a bit early in the morning this is uh, one of the ways I can actually get to our bike shop so I'm headed to work this morning thought I'd do a quick section of the video through here to show you what my commute can be like Funny, I was just going to jokingly say something about traffic on my commute. <laughs> Look at that. It was actually a car. This is a forestry road, so there's very, very rarely uh, any vehicles on here.
to a gate here, and here is uh, an example of one of the challenges with the trike, is getting around the gate. I could probably work up the nerve and ride around it, but it's uh, quite a bit uh, of a slope here, and uh, I'm concerned I might get a little bit of wheel lift there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop my feet out of the pedals and kind of walk myself around it now. On a bike, you know, some people will ride around that, but a lot of people will also walk their bike around it or push their bike around it because they're concerned about falling off into the woods there. So, you know, I might be able to experiment with riding around it, but it's pretty easy just to pop off there. I am using uh, clipless pedals, so it's really easy for me to get in and out. And now I'm around the gate. But I imagine, I haven't found any yet, but I imagine at some point I may find a gate that I can't get around and may be difficult to get under. In that case, I just remove my seat. That'll uh, reduce the overall height of the trike and I should be able to slide under. Some people will use a recumbent trike like this instead of a quad or a dirt bike. That does, uh, you know, kind of illustrate the advantage of that is that you can, uh, you know, get yourself into the backcountry fairly easily. Obviously, this being electric, I'm not worried about emissions from a motor or sparks and starting a forest fire, that sort of thing. So you can see in the video here, hopefully, um, this is really rough. <laughs> Lots of big rocks in there that I'm rolling over. It's actually a lot of fun. I've had it on boost this whole time since I started the helmet cam, just for fun, because I can. <laughs> Most of the time I'm riding a trail, but sometimes it's fun just to put it in boost and fly along. Now for this climb, definitely having it boost is going to help. On my bike on here, I you know, kind of try to pick my way through those rocks. With three fat tires like this, you're going to have a harder time. Just keep rolling over them and you're fine. You know, this kind of stuff you don't even notice. So far, no wheel slippage at all. These Jumbo Gym tires are actually a fairly fast rolling tire. Relatively light for a fat bike tire. So I think I'll find... I'm going to take you on a much steeper trail ahead with loose material on the trail and I think at that point I'll find they start to lose traction on the rear tire. So if you're mostly doing stuff like this and not a whole lot worse, these jumbo gyms will work out just well. No problem. I'm climbing up here without any difficulties at all. But for the section of the trail ahead that I was going to show you, uh, I'm going to come back to it sometime. Let's see if I can put that into the video. With uh, Maxis makes a uh, fat bike rear tire. It has a lot more. Uh, it's a slower tire, uh, which is probably why I didn't use it. Um, but it has uh, lots of grip. So we're just heading into fall here. Beginning of October, you can see all the leaves that are falling, but it's been fairly dry so far, so I'm not sure. There's a waterfall in there, not sure if you can see it on the video. A little bit of water in there, but you know, give it a couple months, we get some rain, it'll just be pouring through here. This is a really fun ride to come on, to come, you know, see that this is different every day because as the seasons change and the water rises and falls, it's really quite fun to see. Getting into some wet mud here now again. No problem on the climb. Of course, it helps to transfer your weight to the back tire. Choose the right gear. And uh, shouldn't have a problem. Generally, and I think I've probably said this a few times, I find riding the trike 
very relaxing and there is a good example of how you know coming down that a little bit uh, mucky on my bike I'd really need to pay attention I don't want to wipe out especially on my way to work uh, I don't want to be injured and so you're really you know kind of picking your way through there on the trike you're not as worried and so it makes it a little bit more less stressful coming down challenging uh, sections of trails Head up to another uh, point of turnaround here. Again, fairly steep. This is pro uh, maybe not quite as steep as what I just did, but because it's different terrain, it's no problem. So here we go. Now, little trick for you. Well, if you can see on the video there, with the uh, fat tires like this, I can basically use them as if they were wheelchair tires. I don't have to get off to turn myself around. I can just kind of grab onto them and roll myself backwards here. There we go. Get myself turned around to head down the hill. Again, loving the roll off there as I started heading down the hill, I uh, was able to shift into my hardest gear without having to pedal or plan it out ahead of time. And again, I apologize for my head wandering around there, making you dizzy. You're welcome to skip ahead. Now ice doesn't make front fenders for the full fat yet. There's a rear fender, which is great. It's not often that I miss the front fenders, but uh, that section there that was wet, I tried to keep going straight <laughs> because when you turn, that's when you'll get a little bit of spray from the fenders when you go, or from the tires. When you're going straight, the front tires aren't gonna get you wet, but you start cornering there and you get a little bit of mud in the face. Well, I gotta say, this is super fun. You know, the climb up was great fun. Not too much work. I, you know, I could have had it on boost. I could put it down if I wanted to and, you know, work a little bit harder at it. It was my choice. It was a lot of fun coming up, but this is really fun coming down. Yeah, I'm getting, you know, jostled around a little bit here, but that's because I'm going pretty quick on some pretty big rocks here. <laughs> But with that uh, full suspension, the tires, you know, if this is the kind of riding you're mostly doing, definitely get the air pressure down in tires. I've got them, you know, pretty high right now, especially up front. And uh, get those down a little bit and you'll find that you'll uh, be a little less bouncy. Right now I'm bouncing a fair bit. <laughs> but it's super fun. What's interesting is despite going over all of those bumps, I, you know, and getting thrown around, I'm never actually feeling out of control. I'm not feeling my back end sliding around. It's actually still, you know, stuck to the ground. It's just stuck to a, you know, big boulder. But, you know, I'm rolling over them. I'm not coming off of the ground. I'm not getting my back end thrown around. And that really, in many ways, is the, the biggest benefit of having that full suspension is that all three wheels are basically always connected to the ground. It's going to give you a lot more confidence, a lot more stability, and it's going to let you, you know, go on trails like that, maybe a little bit quicker pace than uh, you would if you didn't have that suspension. In fact, without that suspension, I'd be going a lot slower because my back end would really be thrown around there. So just scooching around the uh, gate there again. That gate I wouldn't have been able to go under because there's bars in there, so I'm glad I was able to get around it. 
you were very determined and can go around it, I suppose. It's not too high to lift it over. So there's some construction on the trail here. Yesterday <clears throat> they weren't working at it so I was able to get around. So we'll see about today. This is interesting. If you watched my um, ice adventure trike review, you'll notice that I'm actually doing a lot of the same uh, circuit on it. I didn't go past the gate with the adventure because that would be doable but very slow because of all those big rocks it'd be, you'd want to you know, watch your speed. Um, so I came here on the adventure and I'd mentioned on that video and I'll mention here, you know, this surface is really less than ideal. It's actually likely not to pack. It's very loose material. And uh, I definitely noticed on the adventure, you know, needing to pay attention to the fact that I could easily skid out on this. Uh, and even on a bike, even walking, you'll notice it's quite loose material. Certainly with these fat tires, it's definitely doing a lot better. I'm able to uh, go a little bit quicker without worrying about skidding out. So although it's doable on the adventure, if you again ride a lot of stuff like this or where I just took you past the gate, then certainly these fat tires are really handy to have. Again here I seem to remember in that adventure video being, you know, really having to watch my speed and feeling like, uh, you know, I needed to be careful because of the loose material. Obviously I'm still being careful, but no problems at all there. Again, a bit of construction here. The uh, Shimano Steps mid-drive motor does have a walk mode, so that can be really handy in situations where you need to uh, walk the trike for a while. It'll actually move itself along at a four or five kilometer an hour pace for you. Well, I'll end uh, this section of the video in a few moments here. We'll just go for a little cruise along the Holland Creek Trail here. Okay, had to do a bit of a detour here. The, we're working on the trail down that way. So, again, the nice things about having a trike like this is when I do run into those detours, I can keep going. Now I've actually, and uh, I probably mentioned this earlier in the video, I've actually put, you know, probably a thousand kilometers or more on both the adventure and full fat uh, trikes. So I'm actually getting quite used to uh, rolling on off camber sections where the trail's a little bit uh, tilted. At first it was quite disconcerting because it feels like you're going to fall off. So you'll, you know, probably notice quite a number of times in the video that I'm on a bit of a lean and you know, just after riding a while, you get a, a good sense of what you can and can't do. And really, you can do a lot. <laughs> you know, it, you're gonna have to be on quite a slope before you have to worry about uh, wheel lift. But at first, it's definitely a uh, strange sensation, perhaps disconcerting when you're on a tilt and you feel like, oh, I'm gonna fall off, I'm gonna roll. Um, but again, you know, it has to be fairly extreme before you're going to have to worry about actually having some wheel lift. <laughs> 